For this issue's Terra Incognita essay, we look at the uh, question of how a frugal superpower, basically the United States in its current uh, situation, tries to take advantage of what is arguably history's fourth great wave of democratization. And while it's tempting to kind of argue what the Obama doctrine is, it's actually easier to define it by what it isn't. It's most definitely not a rigid doctrine. It doesn't promise to be one thing to all people or promise all things to some people. It's also highly opportunistic, meaning it's going to take advantage of events as they come along, but it has a clear sense of America's bandwidth, so there's a certain sequential feeling to it. When the United States is focusing on Egypt, it can't really focus on other things. Once Egypt is processed, it can focus on Libya. Perhaps once we get a sense of Libya being somewhat processed, you'll see a focus on Yemen. Perhaps once Yemen is processed, you'll see a focus on Syria. But you will not see an attempt to try to bundle this all up into some sort of big bang like the uh, Bush-Cheney approach to the Middle East. The Obama Doctrine also seems to reject both variants of the Powell Doctrine as we've come to know them over time. First, there was the Powell Doctrine as expressed by General Colin Powell when he was Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, basically also known as the Weinberger Doctrine of when the United States should or should not get involved overseas. And the Powell Doctrine in that incarnation basically focused on overriding interests and the application of overriding power. And that's not being seen in, in the uh, Obama-led intervention in Libya not an overriding interest and most definitely not the application of overriding power. So limited in scope, limited in ambition, uh, and really in many ways a return to kind of the uh, crisis response pattern we saw in the 1990s. But it's also, we would argue, a rejection of the second Powell Doctrine uh, variant, the one enunciated by Secretary of State Colin Powell uh, under the Bush administration. And in that version, we got this so-called pottery barn rule that says if you break it, you own it. Uh, and again, limited scope, limited ambition, limited sense of responsibility, um, very much in the Clintonian mood of the 1990s. So if you look at U.S. crisis response in the 1990s under Clinton, compare it to that under Bush Cheney in the 2000s. In the Clinton years, lots of interventions, but they tended to be short and sweet, sometimes short and sour, but always short and limited in scope and very much a focus on trying to hand off to international organizations such as the UN or NATO. Uh, and then if you look at the 2000s uh, under Bush Cheney, very much the all in sort of two big scenarios that dominate U.S. crisis response across the decade and really restrict the uh, level of uh, involvement in other regions of the world. So uh, much more a dispersion, much more keep it short and sweet in terms of application of power, less the all-in sort of bet we saw from Bush Cheney in uh, Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, so uh, not so much the Big Bang approach, more a nudging of the world if you will, and if you think about Obama's background as a community organizer, uh, it really kind of fits the mode of think global, act local. Obama talks a very strong, expansive game on all sorts of issues, but he's a very opportunistic uh, um, seeker of small victories, if you will. Uh, and if you look at how he's handled the Facebook 2.0 revolution so far in North Africa, as they spread to the Persian Gulf, we think they're going to see this pattern uh, repeat itself time and again. Small short, limited interventions only when it looks like the uh, opportunities outweigh the risks. And even then, you're going to see strong efforts to limit U.S. responsibility for what comes next.